we are halfway through the college football season and we are still talking about Deion Sanders and his transfer portal methods. You are Locked On Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Bus. I am your host, Kevin Borba. Today's episode of Locked On Bus is brought to you by Price Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. On today's episode of Locked On Bus, we're going to be talking about Coach Prime getting called a mercenary for his transfer portal methods, which obviously they were heavily disputed, heavily talked about this entire offseason. And there's something that I think will forever be talked about because, and especially over these next few weeks, I think. These next five-ish or six-ish six -ish weeks, no, I guess for Colorado, they have five games left. Um, these next five games are going to be pivotal in how other coaches use the portal. Uh, I think I talked about it yesterday, and I think maybe I, I won't say it got blown out of proportion of what I said, but I think the transfer portal method is going to be one that coaches probably, especially new coaches, most likely are not going to try to build their roster with entirely like coach prime essentially did he brought in over 50 transfers and the skill players are great it's the trenches where colorado struggles and it's the trenches where colorado is losing most of their games i would say in terms of one position group or i guess two position groups constantly getting outplayed by the opponent um there's obviously a lot of things that are going wrong like play calling time management uh attitudes whatever it may be but if there was a position groups that had to be singled out for underperforming, it would have to be the offense line and the defense line. Regardless, after the call, after Colorado's recent loss to Stanford, where they lose in double overtime and Stanford comes back and everybody's now climbing on Colorado. And I think the loss came at probably the worst time for Colorado in the sense that they kind of have to live with it for two weeks before they play their next game against UCLA. And after the game, a Stanford player, took to the, the app formerly known as Twitter, X as not, it's now called, but I it's it will always be Twitter to me, I guess. Um, and this was more of a, and I don't want people to get worked up over it, but this is more of a motivational tweet for Stanford. And so don't get worked up about it, but part the there's one part you should get worked up about, I guess you could get worked up about, but the other part is just, eh. So he said a few thoughts on last night. So this was obviously Saturday, a uh, couple days after or a day after the Stanford game or Stanford one. Good always wins out no matter how bleak it looks. When Coach Taylor got Troy Taylor, the Stanford coach, got hired, he told everybody to stay and believe. Coach Prime told everyone to leave. We are program builders. They're mercenaries. I believe in Stanford football. You should, too. And so obviously that's kind of like a Stanford's rebuilding kind of thing. They're trying to hide themselves up. But the mercenary thing, I think. There's always everybody has their own ways of doing things, and I don't think either way is wrong. I think both coaches did what was available and what was best for them. So for Troy Taylor and Stanford, obviously Stanford has is one of the best academic programs or academic schools in the world. It is not easy to get in there. It is not easy to transfer in there. I'm sure it's even harder to transfer in than it is to get in there the first time. And they don't have a lot of opportunities to take transfers. Last year, they took in one transfer from Oklahoma, and it wasn't even like they went into the portal and they were like, oh, we need a – he was a safety. They're like, oh, we need a safety. We're going to go get this guy from Oklahoma. It was the young man by the name of Patrick Field was – had graduated from Oklahoma and applied to and got into graduate school at Stanford. And then he happened to play football and was like, hey, Coach Shaw played football, played at Oklahoma, was on a few playoff teams. Can I play football here? Like he walked onto the team essentially. Troy Taylor brought in five, I think maybe six transfers eventually this offseason. Whereas, so he he obviously has to build through recruiting and he has to build through developing what he has. Coach Prime, on the other hand, takes the Colorado job. Colorado lifts the transfer restrictions that they had. And he goes, you know what? This roster last year was one of the worst. Ro this isn't him saying, this is me paraphrasing what happened, breaking it down for you. This roster was one of the worst rosters college football has seen. They went 1-11. They were terrible. They were bad at everything. So I'm going to clear this roster out, and I'm going to bring in guys that I want to play for me and guys that I think can help me win football games. And neither method is wrong. 
both methods are different, obviously, and both methods are dependent on the situations. But I think it's a little unfair to call him a mercenary. I think, which a lot of people don't know this, college scholarships, while, like, if a player is offered a scholarship and they're on scholarship, it's not like a full year, it's not a four-year fully guaranteed, like, contract, where it's like, you know what, you're here for as long as your scholarship, like, permits, like, you're here until you graduate. Players have been getting cut all the time. It's just never been as public as Coach Prime did. And I think that's where the, the harshness comes. I think if that stays behind closed doors and there, it's not recorded by well-off media, his son, which, I mean, it was made for great content, so I can't fault him. But if that, like, never sees the day of light, people probably don't care as much about Coach Prime flipping the roster in the manner he did. I think it was the manner he did it, the way he said things, and I think that's where people um, kind of get upset. But a lot of people are, again, kind of hitting this drum of Deion Sanders was – he was ruthless. He's doing something that was – dirty for, to the players and i mean it's it's a business Deion sanders as a coach will get fired if he loses college football games like if it's five years from now and his team is losing he's gonna get fired that's how it works you don't get like the you don't get your feelings taken into account for oh he tried his best though like you don't get your there's no trying your best clause in your contract like Oh, you may be losing games, but you were trying your best, so it's okay. And so Coach Prime had to do what was best for him. What's best for him was replacing that roster in his eyes, and what's best for him was bringing in guys that he thought would be the perfect players for his system. And so whether that's how other people see it or not, that's the way it really is. And so obviously I think a lot of people have taken this and ran with it, but I think it's just a difference of programs. Like I think each program has different circumstances, and I don't think there's a right way or a wrong way to do things. I just think that, at the end of the day, everybody's going to do things their way. And Coach Prime's way was just a little different, and it was public. And I think that's the, the biggest difference. So that's how I view it. Time to pay some bills. This episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by our sponsor over at Price Picks. Price Picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. You just have to select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. They have quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players and stats. Stat types are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Welcome back. We are talking about all things Colorado. We got to talk about the belief in Colorado. I think there's been some, I won't say some fair weatherness, but there's definitely been some like, oh, Colorado's starting to lose. So that means it's time to like hop off the, the Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, Colorado bandwagon. I wouldn't say that's the case. And Coach Prime kind of addressed that um, on and something he posted today via Twitter. Um, he kind of addressed the, the, which he's always philosophical. And I, I really wonder if like he's getting these quotes from somewhere, if he's making these up, like it, it's always really good. And so he said today, it's no way we can be satisfied with what we see, what we know to be true, what we think and what we expect and what we need. We've got to get our, get out our own way out of our simple minds and believe that we can have it. You got to believe in the impossible right now. And so I think there's a lot to be taken away from this, this like three line tweet because Colorado, they lose three games. They've or they've lost three out of their last four. That's looking bleak, I guess you could say. I think, it, and I keep saying this, and people keep twisting my words. If Colorado plays as poorly as they did in the second half against Stanford, they will not win a game the rest of the year. If they play as well as they did in the first half against Stanford, they should be well on their way to a bowl game. They have winnable games left. I think Arizona and uh, Washington State are both games that I think they could win. All you need is six wins, and that's assuming they don't upset somebody. Colorado has upset potential written all over them. But people, especially in that locker room, I think this locker room is, I won't say fragile, but it's a, it's a group of guys that came in to play for Coach Prime. He's preaching we're going to win. We're going to win. They get all this attention on social media. It gets Everything gets magnified. So him saying they're going to win is now magnified times a 1,000. Their mistakes are magnified times a million. I think the biggest thing that I've learned about Colorado and covering them this year is specifically because of Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, is everything they do 
is more important than any other program in the country. So they win a game like TCU. They beat a ranked team that was favored by double digits. Colorado was a talk of the town. They were the talk of college football. It was literally insane. I, I don't think I had seen college football like circulating as much as it has been. Like, I don't think college football has ever been more popular and it's because of coach prime. Like that's not me being a Homer. You can look at the viewership. Every one of his games is outside the one on the PAC 12 network is one of the most viewed games of the season. His game against Stanford this past week, pre, pretty highly watched. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Cause I think uh, people are losing sight of what's happening, but either way, Colorado fans need to believe the team needs to believe. I think the team needs to believe in themselves that they could figure these things out. I think one of the hardest parts about sports, especially when you have some hype behind you, is when you face adversity. And that was one of the things I talked about all offseason. So if you're if you're on if you're a locked on buff stand, you know that I've been talking about this the whole time was how they handle adversity. And this is their biggest test of adversity these past few weeks. They got blown out by Oregon. It's like, okay, top 10 team. Sure. Oregon's really good on offense, really good on defense. Then they go to USC, kind of get blown out. The game uh, gets closer at the end. They had a chance to come back. Uh, they needed some timeouts and some better game management. Didn't work out. So they lose two straight, but it's like, okay, they're three and two. They Both their losses are against top 10 teams. And then they have a stretch playing Arizona State and Stanford, who are two of the worst teams in the conference. So it was like, they realistically should be five and two by um, what month or what day are we? By the middle of October. And all of a sudden, they wet the bed against Stanford. They go up by 29. It's like, okay, five and two. Here we come. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, Stanford just pulled off the most historic comeback in program history and Colorado just blew the biggest lead in program history. Not great. And so there's a lot of things circulating around social media. While players shouldn't care, that's like telling a human not to be a human. Like they're human. They read these things. They're young adults. They care about what people say about them. They care about what people are saying about their program, about their team, about their coach. And so it's hard for them to just look at something and be like, that's eh, whatever, because they care. And it's a good thing that they care. It's just how they respond to caring is what will determine how they do the rest of the season. And so they need to care in the sense that, yes, this hurts and it sucks, but this doesn't determine who we are as a team. We still have to believe in ourselves. We still have to believe in the fact that we could achieve the goal at hand, which is winning college football games, making it to a bowl game, and kind of getting this program off the ground. Obviously, it's already off the ground, but continue to, to elevate the program. And I think that's easier said than done. I'm not going to act like it's – it's like a just turn the page thing and like all of a sudden we're good and dandy. No, they have a lot to work through. Coach Prime had talked about or one of their coaches. It wasn't Coach Prime. It was one of the um, other coaches talked about their practice habits prior to the Stanford game. Said that they had the worst practice habits he's seen. So they had a lot to work on. And then in the game, things like disciplinary issues, like they have unsportsmanlike conducts, false starts, uh, the halftime posting on social media like they have so much going on where they just need a week to like and coach prime's not talking to the media this week he'll talk to talk to us next week and there's so much going on where it's like they just need to reset and they just need to kind of recenter their energy find their chi whatever you want to however you want to put it they need to figure out how to move on from what has happened because what has happened has been traumatic but they still have a lot of football left to be played they have five games left they have five games to win two to make a bowl game. Obviously, the goal is to win all five, but they only to make a bowl game, they have to win two. They have two weeks to figure out how to look in the mirror and figure out what they need to do to change what's going on because it needs to change. It's just a lot easier said than done, and I'm fully confident that Coach Prime can figure out what he needs to do and figure out what the staff needs to do. It's just one of those things where it's like you got to get over the hump. you got to get over the hump, and for Colorado – the hump seems a little bigger than normal, but that's what they signed up for. By the way, this episode of Locked on Bus is brought to you by Jace Medical. The Jace case is a personally personalized emergency medical kit that contains five essential antibiotics that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. You can also customize your case and add additional life-saving medications based on your unique needs. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world, and it's important to be prepared. There's unrest in the Middle East, hurricanes and tornadoes in Florida, earthquakes, and more. These can lead to supply chain shortages from medication or inability to get medications in a timely manner, which is where the Jace case comes into play. So Jace Medical now offers customizability for your Jace case with dozens of add-on medications. Choose the medications that best fit you and your family's unique needs. Jace is continually working to expand their medication offerings. In those recent efforts, they added Ivertican as an option in the Jace case. By the way, if you want to get involved with the Jace case, 
Go to buy a gift card for your family or loved ones so they can get a Jace case of their own. Go to jacemedical.com and enter promo code locked on at checkout for a $20 discount at your on your order. That's promo code locked on L O C K E D O N at Jace Medical, J A S E Medical.com. Okay, to conclude the show, I wanted to talk about the notion that Colorado is losing steam in college football right now. Uh, I think it's it's kind of ironic because it's like you look at these numbers and you're like, uh, I guess, but there's more context that meets the eye. And so there was an article written and it says Colorado's ratings frenzy is losing stream steam. The Buffs double overtime loss drew just 3.3 million viewers down from 7.24 in week five. And so obviously Coach Prime wasn't a fan of the game. He said the time slot was the stupidest thing ever invented in life. Uh, welcome to Pac-12 after dark and welcome to your future Big 12 schedule because the Big 12 will also play games on Friday. They played games on Thursday. It's how cultural ball works. It's how things work when you're looking for time slots and the TV networks all pick their times. And it's like, I'm sure Colorado will get a lot of prime time slots next season, but I'm sure they're also going to probably get a, a Friday or two. That's how things work out. But this article is hinting at the fact that because Colorado is losing, the buy-in is not there. And the energy and the support from fans is gone. It's it's over. It's this. It's that. Let me just talk to you about, first of all, 3.3 million viewers is less than seven. That is a fact. But what is also a fact is that 3.3 million viewers was the most watched game for Colorado or for Colorado for ESPN for Friday night since 2018. So context is key. Um, but I think this wasn't to talk about the viewership. I, I mean, the viewership is, it is what it is. They're the most watched team in college football that helps coach prime with recruiting. It helps him build his brand. It helps him build the brand of his players and it helps the program grow. Obviously he brings in like, I think it was like 15 to $20 million every home game in Boulder because there's so many people there. Like it's, it's popping, but is Colorado losing steam. I think, I think it's possible to say that America and the college football world are less not interested, but they're weary of Colorado right now because in a way they were shoved down the, everyone's throats because Colorado was doing so well. And so now Colorado's losing. And so it feels like the magic has worn off. The magic hasn't worn off. The magic is just on delay. It's on layaway right now. As coach prime once told a, an NFL team, they'd have to put them if they drafted them. But, Back to Colorado. It's it's not really a sense of like they're losing steam. Like Colorado season is not a turn. They're four and three, for God's sake. They're, they are above 500. They have a chance to, to make a bowl game. They have a chance to kind of figure everything out in the, the next few weeks. And they have a, a huge meeting with UCLA. That's a winnable game. Uh, their USC's young quarterback has turned the ball over quite a, quite a bit. Uh, USC has a or UC, UCLA, excuse me, has a good defense but Colorado has a really good offense. And so they have winnable games. They have, they have chance to regain this momentum. And like I said earlier, they have five games to win two. And I fully expect them to win those two, possibly a third, and they'll be in a bowl game. And Colorado has that potential. It's just, they need to get out of their own way. And so the notion that they're losing steam and that no one cares about them anymore is kind of, it feels overplayed. It feels like a, it feels redundant almost. Cause it's like everybody, it went from too many people were talking about them to now nobody cares about them. There, there's no in between. It's like, I think people see Colorado, they see them struggling. And so when there's a team struggling, they lose steam in terms of national attention, but the fans are still there. Colorado is still selling out every game. They're not losing steam in Boulder. They're not losing steam around the PAC 12. It's the average Joe fan that they're losing steam over. It's the, I guess the casuals, if you will, the, the fans that were tuning in to college football for coach prime and to watch his team win. So they lose. And now they're like, eh, it is what it is. But Colorado itself, there's still a lot of things to, to be accomplished for this team. And I think a lot of people, um, I think a lot of people are trying to discredit what they've done. They're trying to take away from what the season has been thus far. Uh, if we look back at, and this is from, um, earlier in the season or before, before the season, this was Colorado's win total. If you're, for those of you that can't see it, uh, their win total was three and a half. So they've already they have already hit four wins. They've already hit that mark. It is 
fully exceeded expectations. Now it is exceeding their own expectations. It, it is meeting their own expectations because they wanted to win right away. They want to make a bowl game. And I think it's still possible. I just feel like, like Coach Prime said, everyone needs to believe and maybe relax a little bit. The, the, the sky's not falling. There's five games left. Let's let's give the Buffs a chance. Let's see what they can accomplish. And then we'll react after this, after after we learn some more. But I appreciate you guys for tuning in to Locked on Buffs every single day, making us your first listen. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. Hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you guys tomorrow.